Hello, I'm Patricia Moore Pastides, First Lady of the University of South Carolina, which is home to the SIMS Initiatives, a digital humanities project of the university libraries. It's funded in part with a generous grant from the Watson Brown Foundation. In celebration of Halloween and to promote our site, we are reading one of Sims' ghost stories throughout the month of October. The story is called Grayling, or Murder Will Out, and it's a part of the author's short story collection, The Wigwam and the Cabin. At the point in the story where we last left off, our hero, James Grayling, had boarded the ship in which Major Spencer's ghost told him he would find the supposed murderer, McNabb and the young soldier had just burst into the suspected man's cabin. Here now is part 15 of William Gilmore Sims, Grayling, or Murder Will Out. It is he was the instant exclamation of the youth as he beheld him. It is he, McNabb, the Scotchman, the man that murdered Major Spencer. McNabb, for it was he, was deadly pale. He trembled like an aspen. His eyes were dilated with more than mortal apprehension, and his lips were perfectly livid. Still he found strength to speak and to deny the accusation. He knew nothing of the youth before him, nothing of Major Spencer. His name was McLeod, and he had never called himself by any other. He denied, but with great incoherence, everything which was urged against him. You must get up, Mr. McLeod, said the captain. The circumstances are very much against you. You must go with the officer. Will you give me up to my enemies, demanded the culprit. You are a countryman, a Briton. I have fought for this king, our master, against these rebels, and for this they seek my life. Do not deliver me into their bloody hands. Liar, exclaimed James Grayling. Didn't you tell us at your own campfire that you were with us, that you were at Gates' defeat and 96? But I didn't tell you, said the Scotchman with a grin, which side I was on. Ha, remember that, said the sheriff's officer. He denied just a moment ago that he knew this young man at all. Now he confesses that he did see and camp with him. The Scotchman was aghast at the strong point which in his inadvertence he had made against himself, and his efforts to excuse him, stammering and contradictory, served only to involve him more deeply in the meshes of his difficulty. Still he continued his urgent appeals to the captain of the vessel, and his fellow passengers, as citizens of the same country, subject to the same monarch, to protect him from those equally hated and would destroy them all. In order to move their national prejudices in his behalf, he boasted of the immense injury which he had done as a Tory to the rebel cause, and still insisted the murder was only a pretext of the youth before him, by which to gain possession of his person and wreak upon him the revenge which his own fierce performances during the war had naturally enough provoked. One or two of the passengers, indeed, joined with him in entreating the captain to set the accusers adrift and make sail at once, but the stout Englishman, who was in command, rejected instantly the unworthy counsel. Besides, he was better aware of the dangers which would follow any such rash proceeding. Fort Moultrie on Sullivan's Island had been already refitted and prepared for an enemy, and he was lying at that moment under the formidable range of grinning teeth which would have opened upon him at the first movement from the jaws of Castle Pinckney. This has been part 15 of William Gilmore Sims' Grayling or Murder Will Out. I hope you will tune in next time for another section of this ghostly tale. If you would like to read the full text of this story or any of the many works we have available, simply visit the Sims Initiative's website at sims.library.sc.edu. Until then, Happy Halloween!